Good evening, I'd like to take some call the July 18th, 2019 Select Board Meeting to order for the Town of Berlin. With us is Justin Lawrence to my far left, Flo Smith. To my right, Jeremy Hansen. With us also is Dana Hadley, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. I'm Brad Town. And any changes to the agenda, Dana? No, I have no changes. Uh, public comment. Hearing none. Treasury report, Diane. Okay. I've talked to you before about the asset forfeiture program that's in the Department of Justice, and I thought I'd, I would give you a little sheet that was given to me by the Department of Justice. Each one of you can have that. Mm -hmm. that down. Uh, and this just tells you what you can spend this money on. And right now we have like $11,722. So uh, when Chief Wolf wants to spend it, he's going to come to you. but. He has to spend it within these categories. So at least, because they are very, very, um, you, know, you have to spend it on these particular right. items. So it can't just be you go and say, well, I want to get a bulletproof vest or something. It has to be in this particular program. And so that gives us a way of, when you have, when you approve it from the chief, well, you'll have something to go by and look at it and say, yeah, you know, that makes sense. Okay. So I thought I'd let you know that I finally got this list which took me while to find one. Uh, we have eleven thousand seven hundred twenty-two dollars in it right now. What's F? Contracts for services. That'd be like hiring the the Washington Sheriff's Department or something. I think that that probably could be deemed like that, but we really have to make sure that we're very descriptive on how we're going to spend it. And so if we were ever audited, it would fall under these categories. And I guess if we were questioning any of you at the time before we make the expenditure, I would call the Department of Justice for you and make certain that we are spending exactly what we're doing. So I see here it's law enforcement equipment, but equipment covers a lot of... It could. Yeah, I think really there, it's not like they're saying you can only spend it on one or two items. I think they're really giving you a lot of leeway, but they want to make certain that it's within their you know, categories. And like I said, we, when we get to that point, I will gladly run the stuff uh, to them, to the DOJ, and then after that, the next meeting, I can tell you what, what they said about it. How about like the, like the very city um, holding cell, like when we had to send people over there and they, they vote for that? I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, that's something that sure. contracts for services. That is something that we contract the very city to do. Yeah, that is a contract. So right, that's so, interesting. Yeah. Um, C, law enforcement, public safety, and detention facility. Oh, careful, there you go. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say if it has to be our own facility or if we can use it for rental. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but it's good, you know, food for thought, I guess. And then if you do have questions on it, if, if you have a bunch of questions, then I can call the DOJ and ask them, you know, are these, all these things applicable? And then we'll have that this was the yet. money we went to the board oh, maybe six months ago. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's the board that calls the shots what yes, money comes absolutely. out of this account. Yeah, I think yeah. that Bill will propose the board and say, I'd like to spend Well, that's how I envision it to work, yeah. Yeah, that's the way I envision it yeah. So, uh, like I said, it just gives us an idea on that. And now um, the state, as far as running the tax bills, because we know I wasn't able to run them on July 15th. Um, <clears throat> now the state is telling us, and I, we have a, I have an email that was sent to the town of Middlesex, and they're saying that um, they believe that they can calculate the school rate uh, by like July 26th, which is much earlier than I had anticipated, because they could have taken until August 25th. Mm -hmm. Um, so the way things worked out, um, we were able to, I mean, but not us, but the, they, re, they received the information for all the towns, and they said, we have it right now, and we're just going to hold it, because they do have to wait till July 25th, make sure nobody's going to appeal it. And if nobody does, and they do feel that they could set the uh, school tax rate on the 26th, and then they would let us know. And that means I'm hoping that I can get tax bills out by maybe the 31st or August 1st. So we'd still be a few weeks behind, but it's not a whole month behind because we get a lot of bills coming in. Not as far out as you would anticipate it. Yeah. So, you know, and hopefully it'll work that way. That's what I'm anticipating now. And I have contacted the assessor so that we can get the bills going as quickly as possible once I get that out. So that's how I'll let you know that. And otherwise, not anything else I have is on the agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Diane. Um, Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Is anybody still looking through them? Okay. Uh, 
water department cash flow? Yes, um, the water division, as you know, has been working on a project developing the fourth well. Um, they, in 2017, <laughs> we applied for and received a loan of $90,000 from the State Revolving Water Fund. I probably worded that wrong. Um, and it's a fund that works. We have to front the money. Then Diane sends in proof that we paid it for what it was supposed to, and they reimburse her. Um, I was under the impression that they would be financing the purchase of the easement out of this money. Um, although, at that time, they hadn't finalized what they were going to pay for the easement. Um, they were going to pay $50,000 for the easement, and the easement was contingent upon um, all the tests, all the pumping tests and everything being satisfactory, and everything has gone very well, and Public Works Board would like to purchase that um, easement, um, which is wonderful. But the water division cash flow does not allow us to take $50,000 for that. Part of the reason is the winter debacle we had that we're still working with that with the frozen pipe on Crosstown Road. Um, so uh, we have two options. Um, one option is to borrow $50,000 from the town. The Water Division does owe the town $143,000, which we had done a five-year note um, back in 16, I think it was, um, or 15, maybe. So that would be. Um, or we could, you could borrow from a local bank um, to pay for the option. The money would be, can be paid back when they do the final financing of the well. Um, which would be like a USDA loan or I, I think it's probably going to be USDA. However, their thought right now, I believe, is that they don't need this water well immediately. They want it ready to rock and roll. And so it might be a year before they actually put the well online. But this fifty thousand dollars, they have to pay out by July. Was it thirtieth? Right. So what? What I found out, which I did not know until July tenth, that um, they need to pay it out by the end of the month, uh, and we can't take it out of the water fund. The water fund is actually done not to get off the subject, but for a new water company, it's gone pretty well. Mm -hmm with, you know, the billings come in, um, we've been able to satisfy the operations, we've been able, the big part is satisfying the big note that we have, which is, um, is it 80,000 every six months? 81,000. 81,000 every six months. Um, and so, I, and I applaud Diane for really keeping us on top of it, that we make sure we have money in the account. So that's the situation we're in. We need to come up with $50,000 of cold cash quickly. Um, and was that loan that the town made to itself, <clears throat> was that with interest or was that just zero? Well, that was money, um, just to back up on that, that was money that was from 2009 onward is what was devoted into this water project and it came from the town. And at some point, the hope is for the water division to pay it back and the town has not charged interest on it. I see. Okay. Yeah. But in the note that we have, I don't remember if the note stipulated that it would be interest at the end. Or no. I would have to look at it. I honestly don't remember. But no. I, I don't think so. I think it was just a demand note for the. Yeah. I could we have get the money from the bank in just a few days, but I've already talked to a couple of different. I've talked to one bank in particular. What's and the I interest? Two point zero five. But we, have, but we have the cash in the general fund and could, could do this without too much stress. Until, oh. we not, until we're not able to send tax bills. <laughs> but yes, we could, we could do that. We could increase the loan or give them a, we'll give them a second mortgage from the town. The, so the, the well is tested. 
the well, the tests have gone very well. Um, it's What's a high production well. Any idea what the gallon a minute? 151 gallons a minute. Yeah. It's pretty, it's, it's much better than all our other three wells put together. Um, and it hasn't had effect on neighboring wells that have gone through all that. And that's what this $90,000 took care of, the engineering yeah. costs and the drilling and the tests and the, and I don't think they've had to get too many permits yet, but they will. So why is it deadline with the easement? Why do we need to buy it so quickly? Well, the Public Works Board agreed to buy it by the end of the month. The, uh, not considering the money. money. Yeah. The how much how much land is the easement? Uh, the survey is in process, so I don't know exactly how much, but I I would guess it's probably <coughs> how big is it, Tim? I mean, a quarter of an acre? Where where they drill the new well? Where, where the well? Yeah. Yeah. Roughly, probably. I don't think it's any more than that. Because it's you need six seven hundred feet of setback all around the well, but it can't be. Touched. Right, right. And this well is, um, it's in proximity to our current wells out yeah. in a field. So did Otter Creek say that there was more possible production on the land out there, or was it just this one spot was the honey hole, so to say? I don't think that we've really gone into looking for any more water than we've, when, that we've done. Like I think wondering. that they've had the, you know, um, hydrologists. Um, go and pick the spot. It has turned out and it looks to be a very productive spot. Well, I'm just wondering if it wouldn't be better off to, to uh, uh, see if we can take and get a, um, for some more uh, land for other wells. Well, we probably, I mean, we probably could that. That would take some negotiation with the property owner. Um, considering if, if the other if they were more, um, <coughs> I wish I could think of words, if there were more opportunity for w another well, considering that this well is pulling a lot of water, I yeah. mean, you know, that it doesn't have the effect on the thing. We haven't really gone that far. We haven't done the study like that. But for right now, in two weeks, they need 50 million. But we need $50,000 in small, unmarked bills. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and that might be another discussion, and I think at some point I would like to invite the Public Works Board in to talk with you on, you know, we're, this is a new way of, of doing, doing business, and I think this is just a circumstance that um, someone thought the Public Works Board had the authority to borrow money. Well, I wonder if, they, if uh, somebody had the misconception that they had the money in the bank. Well, they could, they, they could have. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about borrowing from other funds that the Public Works Board has, but we cannot borrow from the sewer division for yeah. a water project. That's clear. And that's the sewer division has assets and the water division is young and struggling. So if they don't, not, not struggling, but they, we don't pay for it by the end of the month. What are they going to sell to somebody else? Well, I'm just thinking they can hold a ransom because the improvements are there. Well, the, well if, the, if the option collapses, then they have to renegotiate and we be paying more. I think I, I think it's more of a, you know, the the landowner. We went into an, making an agreement that we really have the obligation to purchase this. Plus, we spent a lot of money on. Mm -hmm. Testing it. Testing it. So yeah. And uh, we got at least 50, 60,000. So, which option do you like, Diane? Well, obviously, the least expensive option and the quickest is for the town to pay for it. Uh, but maybe we need to tell, put their feet to the fire and say, you need to pay this back and quickly. Yeah, so what, to defer payments for a year and then. Four, year, four years after that, three years after that? Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, like 10000 a year, but they're going to have to build that into the budget. Right. They would have to. Diane, if they didn't um, incorporate it into the final loan for the well, in other mm -hmm. words, when they put that well in line, they're going to need for, you know, the final, this is how the 90000 is going to be paid back. Mm -hmm. um, 
And if they didn't incorporate it in there, would their cash flow allow payments as the budget currently stands to go toward that? I don't think so. Not, no, they'd have to raise the rates. Either that or the other option that you have here that takes a little bit more time is that we've got this $90,000. We, Otter Creek, and I've already talked about this, said they could go back and ask for more, ask for another 50000 So possibly they could borrow the money from us. And then uh, we could have this $50,000 made available to us and then get it back through this loan. And, and would that be the Public Works Board or would that be us making that call? You, you were the ones that signed for all loans. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's just another potential that I've looked into because I'm trying to figure out, like, like I said, all of a sudden I knew about this two weeks ago, which was quite upsetting. Um, and so I was looking for all the different options. And like I said, I have a bank that will do this, but we've got to pay them back, obviously, quite quickly. Uh, and then you found out that they could actually... Um, they could borrow from the town. From the town. Um, we could do the option that you mentioned, that they could uh, renegotiate this $90,000 right. loan. Which takes I, I also talked with Mark. And he told me that would we'd have some more expense to do a lot of the paperwork because if right. we were including the now we're including a piece of real estate easement in there, right. it um, it can be done, but it's it, it wouldn't be done by July thirty first. Right, absolutely. So sh shot in the dark. When does that USD money, the revolving drinking water revolving loan fund money, come through and pay us back? Um, as far as how long it takes, or yeah. um, I, the, the, I turn the down yeah, for that. It turns around about one month's time. But they, but they don't have access to it yet. They've right. not actually applied for that. No right. Way. And we don't have it in this long. Right. So for the $90,000, what's happening right now is I'm getting a lot of bills from Otter Creek. Um, I pay the bills. Once I get the canceled check, then I go to, um, I can't remember which, it's through the state that I get it right it's now. It's the Vermont Bond yeah, Bank. Yeah, Vermont Bond yeah. Bank. And then I apply to get a reimbursement and then they'll give me the reimbursement, mm -hmm. and I can get one a month. And then I do this each month. Have you paid the $12,000 drilling bill? That is being paid. That's why our sum is so low in okay. the bank, because that's, it, all in all, it was $19,000 in the month of June that I had to pay out. Mm -hmm. And so once I get the canceled check back, then I can go to the bond bank, and then I can request a reimbursement on that. But in July, I had $12,000 worth of bills from Otter Creek. So it's just every single month, it's perpetual. Every single month, I have to lay the money out first, and then we can get reimbursed. And like I say, from you know from the time that I write the check to the time I get reimbursed, it's about one month. And now with this, if we add this into the equation, I don't know how much longer it's going to take to you know have an amendment made to this particular loan so we can get the 50000 It could be a couple months, I would say. But it seems like when they get their the bigger grant or, or the bigger kind of project funds mm -hmm. and they can, you know, if they choose to retire this or not, um, that's going to be two years. I might suggest what the board might consider is um, authorizing a loan out of the general fund, the town's general fund, having a new note specifying it's due in one year and putting that back to the water division and saying you'll need to because they're going to be setting their rates, you're going to either need to raise your rates so that you raise this money, or, you know, in the funding, and I'm not sure if they're going to have the final funding a year from now. Um, they may or they may not. But I think you need to put a time specific on it. I think it would, it would save them having to pay the interest, not that the interest, to, what did you say, 2.05 yeah, or something. thousand dollars a year. You know, yeah. You think that if they went eighteen months you like <coughs> so if they had to raise their rates that was gonna impact some losers and mm -hmm. but how will the loan impact the, the people at the end as well? Well, I mean unfortunately with with the utilities it always affects the user. Right. You so know, because they are that back either that's, way, but maybe over time that's the difference. That's why they haven't you know, they've been easy on the hundred forty three thousand. Um, and the town's been generous to allow them to. Um, but that's common with new system. You know, someone has to get you out of the away from the dock. So you're saying um, authorize a loan to the Public Works Board for the water system um, that would be due in one year. At which point we would then um, look at a new um, a new note. 
Is that what you're, am I hearing you correctly? I would rather look at having it paid off, um, but I guess in a year, I'm just thinking if you put a year into it, when they do their budget, if they haven't done their budget, they can plan for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so, just so just leave it due in one year, and not have any I, other. I would say not have just, you know. I guess, I guess and we're always. You there know, really shouldn't be a reason they couldn't pay that in a year. Now well, we're always able to, budget to go it. back and change it too if they want to. Right. Extend it, and that made sense, right? Well, that's up to the board, of course. Right. Yeah. Does the water department feel they're going to have a, a use for this well? Are they that close to being at their uh, maximum? Um, not at this time, but in maybe a year or so they would be. They're, they're not going to go through the full putting it online right now. Okay. They're just going to be, they're going to be ready for it. Um, and basically most of the work is done. They'll have to connect it to our system. So I move that we authorize a fifty thousand dollar loan to the Public Works Board for the water system uh, to be repaid in one year. Second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Anything else on the? Nothing else on the water cash flow. <laughs> yeah. uh, Moose Adel, public entertainment venues. Well, Melissa. Melissa um, talked to me about having a public venue and jump in if I get this wrong. And I think it was at the mall, in the hub at the mall. Yeah. And she is inquiring about having uh, it a BYOB. Um, which we haven't dealt with before. Uh, I did call the Liquor Commission and they told me it's up to the town, what the town wants to do. And so um, Melissa came in to kind of be able to explain clearly what she was thinking. Well, I hope it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an expert in this area by any means, but I have uh, booked shows and been in shows uh, with BYOB uh, as their uh, venue policy, um, mostly up in Minuski, Burlington areas, uh, and there are several restaurants that also do BYOB, so it's not uh, uncommon, it's not unheard of. And as far as I could tell from my research, there have been no significant problems stemming from it. It's very much the same, uh, like personal recognizance kind of scenario as uh, if you know, people having beer in their own homes. What yeah. kind of a concert is that? We're doing a stand-up comedy. Oh, comedy. Show. Outdoors? At the hub space in the mall. So this is going to be contained? Mm-hmm. Okay. And we have permission from the mall. Uh, mall already, including BYOB. They're okay with that as well. And did, and did they say that their liability insurance would be sufficient to cover that or that you would bring your own or some such? We have liability insurance already. Mm -hmm. um, because BYOB rests on the individual, it's not a liability issue <coughs> for our event. I also think that for liquor, you need a special liquor liability insurance rather than a regular liability insurance, I'm just okay. thinking that. Um, and are you, are you envisioning this being to like, a, like a roped off or other otherwise cordoned off area in, in the hub that would be that would separate from the rest of the mall as folks are walking through and such? Um, well, the hub is already pretty well, um, all the only thing open to the public is just the one entrance side. But, but, but as people are walking through the mall from either side, or, or maybe I'm imagining a, a different place than, than what you're talking when about. You, when you say the hub, is that like one of the stores or a vacant lot? I mean, a vacant space in the for a store? Yes. What the old um, what was that craft place there? Joanne. Joanne's. Um, spot? No, further down, closer to J C Penney. In fact, I think it's just one up from J C Penney. Is it too. is it that area that's in front of Planet Fitness and? where you walk into what I call the main door of the mall, it's a large hallway, or is it actually in a 
store it's, space. It's a word store space. Yeah, th th this was that space that the mall had set aside for oh, public okay. events and that sort of thing. Okay, yeah. it's, it's yeah. clear to me now. For, for some reason, I, I thought you meant that this is the very center part of the mall. It's like, I, I was really thinking, sure yeah. how that would work. Okay, that, that that's clearer. So it's basically, uh, you have to go through the, the doors to get into the suit Correct. So what yeah. yeah. kind of monitoring do you have like, going on? Do you have people, I mean, I know it's self-policed or, you know, they're, they're on liability, but what do you have for just making sure on their age and anything like that? Uh, and well, there's, there's nothing, there's no precedent that I can see for uh, that kind of thing. The assumption is somebody who brings their own booze has purchased their own booze and already been carded, but I would be glad if it would make you guys comfortable to card at the, at the gate. And, and are, are you you're doing a cover charge then, I expect? Oh, we're doing it by donation. Oh. In your other venues you've had up in Burlington and Mooski, is it a mixed age group or is it all 21 year olds and older? Mixed age. So do we have to, are you looking to make a formal motion to say that this is okay? I, w I was looking to see what the board's opinion was. Um, when is your event, I know you had an event tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow yeah. night, yeah. So but are I, you looking, uh, is... Depending on the success of tomorrow's event, uh, I've been looking for a place in the area that I can hold a monthly showcase. Because Burlington is saturated with comedy and I think this area could use some more. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Probably true. Um, I was thinking maybe we could utilize our special event permit, even though we don't have to on private property, but we could somehow um, have some sort of agreement for that. I think that would be a, um, a good thing to do. The police chief was not comfortable with this um, idea, and. I haven't really gotten an answer from the league as far as the insurance. Well, I mean, it, but do we really need to take and okay this? I mean, if this is on private property, does the town really maybe have a not. spot here? That's, That's kind of the question that I was wondering as well. Maybe not. Whether the liquor commission said, Bailey told me to that it's up decision. to the town. I think well, they told you the same. Yeah, well. yeah. yeah the, the, I, think, I think the event permit probably makes the most sense because that yeah. was something that we had that we had kind of put together with the expectation that even having events on public property, I think essentially just to make the town aware that these things are happening and make the police department aware and other folks aware that this is going on at this time, they might have to react to it if right. something happens. It was more informational yeah. that we knew that it was happening. And did the police chief indicate his trepidations, what they were? Well, I think naturally when you hear BYOB, you envision um, an unpleasant, you know, situation. This doesn't sound like sound like that, which is why I wanted Melissa to come in mm -hmm. and explain to you. Um, I have not spoken. You say you've done this in, did you say Williston or? When uh, Revelry Theatre in specifically is where is it? Winooski? Uh that one's in South Burlington, just South off Pine Street. Okay. So I could check with them as well. Um, the, the fact that this is in a separate, it's so not in yeah. a separate like storefront, and it's not sort of doesn't have a bunch of folks kind of wandering through. Right. That makes me. Confused. I was envisioning that it was an open space, and I couldn't picture how people shopping at the mall were. I think it would be nice for us to know that it was happening. Um, obviously, our police department's available to you, um, but if they knew just could, you know, I think that's a, a heads up is always good. Okay. Um, so what we need here basically is a motion for an event permit. Right. So m move, move that we request an, a special event permit for this particular event. Now, 
how long does it take to uh, issue the permit, Dana? If she's I gonna, can. If uh, is it tomorrow? It is tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Um, did Did you advertise it for BYOB? We did not. We did um, not feel that so that are you thinking that you're not doing BYOB? <laughs> BYOB <laughs> tomorrow. If If it was granted, I would then feel comfortable for the rest of the time that I am word of mouthing it by letting people know. If I mean. I could do the event in five minutes, but my issue is I need your permission to sign it on your behalf. I move that we allow a motion on the floor. So do we? Well, say can get the uh, all those in favor of the motion to allow the event. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to authorize Town Administrator Tana Headley to sign for the Select Board to approve the special event permit. Um, he deems it appropriate. A second motion. Any further discussion? Do you want me to take and come up to Dana, or? That's up to you, Brad. So, I mean, you're the one that usually signs it. I just didn't well, I got know. No, I, I've got no problem with you signing it. Okay. All right. so. I mean, that would save you a trip up. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 You can put your name on the dotted line this time. <laughs> <laughs> I might sign your name. <laughs> um, so I'll have that tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, and maybe you like a copy of it, and how do I get you a copy of it? Would you be coming in, or can I email it to you, or? Email is very convenient. Okay. Tell me what it is. A-R-D-E-L-L. -L. I emailed you once, didn't I? Probably. Good. All right. E-Y-O-H at Yahoo.com. A-R-D-E-L-L. -L. E Y O H yeah. at Yahoo. Yahoo. Okay. So it's B Y O B is okay for tomorrow. Yeah. And do I need to apply for another event permit each time? Yeah. And what is the appropriate length of time to apply ahead of time? It's helpful if you uh, the, this board meets the first and third Thursday of the month. Okay. And if I had. Um, an application by the previous Friday, I would appreciate it so I could get it on the agenda for the next Thursday. So if you were planning, whatever you can do to plan as much in advance as you can sure. would be very wise. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can you do, could she do a permit for multiple dates? If, if you know the dates. I, I, if she knows the dates, I think oh, that okay. would work. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so that would work. all a little yeah. time probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a blank permit as well. And you can fill it in, and, or I can help you fill it in. It's, okay. it's just information. Can you email that as well? I can. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Modern technology. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, uh, after this event uh, tomorrow, could you take and email Dana the attendance? Sure. I'm just kind of curious how many people show up. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but it just helped us have an idea. Sure. You bet. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Have a nice night. You yeah, can leave. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, unless you like the rest of our agenda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got jokes to write. <laughs> Maybe see you guys seven o'clock tomorrow night. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, everybody's read the uh, licenses. And okay. Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number uh, twenty G zero one with checks one nine three six eight. Through one nine four one eight in the amount of ninety eight thousand sixty three dollars and fourteen cents. Also, payroll warrant number twenty dash zero one for payroll from June twenty third twenty nineteen through July sixth twenty nineteen in the amount of forty five thousand one hundred and ninety five dollars and eighty one cents. Also, the June reconciled bank statements for the general fund, sewer commission, and the water division. And last but not least, the general journal and tax admin entries for June twenty nineteen. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And road reclassifications. Yes. Um, as I explained to you in my email, I mean my memo to you, um, I have gotten it down how you go about changing a classification. Um, and it is two ways for this to get considered first way is for the board to support it bring it forward 
and the other way is by petition which would be um, at least 100 signatures of registered voters because it's 5% of our total list, which is 1950. Um, after it is in motion, and if the board votes to go forward, uh, there needs to be a public hearing, and we have to give 30 days notice for the public hearing. Um, so basically that's how it is. If the board wanted, if the board voted to go forward, um, and you wanted it on a select board meeting night, the earliest we could do it was September fourth. Thursday is. So we had two roads in consideration. One, as you know, is Black Road, Class Four currently, to Class Three. And the other is Coa, Coos, Coos Trail. Coos, you can tell them from New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, Coos Trail, uh, class three to four. Uh, we do have a letter from Lagu Inc., who owns the property. Lagu Inc. owns the land on one side, Henry Lagu owns the land on the other side, uh, voicing their concerns about changing the classification. So back in, was it, you were in, it was May 16th when you came in and talked to the board about Coos Trail. And then I thought from, and I've reviewed the video, I thought from that it was looking like that uh, you had talked to Chip, I think it was. And Chip and Henry. And Henry, and it sounded like that they, their, their desire was to have it kind of shut down. But this letter says it. I think that's what brought us to, you know? to the front, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only ones that use it is people that want to go down there and throw garbage out, and and the property owners. I mean, there's nothing. The land's all posted down there, so nobody can go on it. So. There's no houses down there. There's no nothing down there. No, the town town owns what six acres down there. Something like that. Yeah. That can't be used for anything, because um, Paul Aarons was inquiring and put wanted to put a stump dump down there, but the state says because it was a landfill, you can't put nothing in there. Does that eventually? I mean, the the map there has that as a, a class four all the way to the Barry Town line. I'm looking. I'm looking at a map, uh, online map. They've, I, I believe that they've closed it there end of it. Okay. Bear, uh, Bear City? The other Bear side Town. would be Bear Jensen Town. Road. Jensen Road, yeah. 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 Because Morse owns at the end past the town's lane and then Chip's on the other side of the road. Now, do you, you plow out in the winter? Yeah. For what I don't know. Great, it too, don't you? Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like a half a mile. And, all, and every time we every time we go down there and plow it, they, people go down there and drink and throw garbage out and everything else. So that's why I went and, and talked with because they had an incident this spring that somebody went down in there and tore their land all up, the views land all up with a, with a four wheel drive thing, and then they got stuck in there and couldn't get out, and they had the cops down there, and it was quite a fiasco. It was a mess. And. That's that's why I went and talked to him and I said, "What if we just close it down? You're the you're the landowners on both sides of it, and the town's at one end and a little bit of Morse's." Yeah. So, so, so are you saying that not just downgraded to a class four, but to discontinue it altogether? Well, they're under the impression it's going from a class three to a class four. Yeah, right. and then and Henry called me and talked with me and said that that's not a good thing because then nobody's going to do any maintenance on it and, and he owns land down there and pays taxes on it. But, but so, why, why would we need to maintain it if it's not? But what, where do you go? When I was here back in the 80s, we only plowed down to the first house. That's where we turned around. We never maintained the road. What caused it to change? I don't know. When I came back here, I was shocked that we had to plow all the way down in there. 
Mm-hmm. Henry and Chip made a change. I, I, know, I, was, I was floored. That, well, what's the sense of us going down in there? Yeah. What would you say the t- cost of the time and the savings, money-wise, if you didn't plow it, just to give us an idea? In a season. Well, I, mean, I, gotta, I mean, we got to plow it every time it snows. Got to sand it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. And, and you grade it one, once a year, maybe? Oh, no more than that sometimes. Because okay. it, if it gets washed going down the first hill there, or, then we have had trouble down there with beavers and spent a lot of time and a lot of money down there. Mm-hmm. And we had to put in a new culvert because the beavers got it so plugged up and, and couldn't, repair it. couldn't repair it. Looks like yeah. Looks like it crosses one stream, but doesn't look quite quite far enough to cross that second one. While it's a class three, because I always thought it was a four, and that's why we only plowed down to that first house when I was here before, and we turned around right there and came back out of there. But when I came back, oh no, you got. Well, I didn't know it, and then Gary, because I started in October, the end of October. And we got snow right off in November, and Gary plowed all the way down here. I said, what are you doing, what, doing that for? Oh, we have to plow that now. And I said, for what? <laughs> so. Has anybody talked to Chip or Henry about just not plowing it in the winter? Wouldn't that be what the Class 4 road would be? Would mean? Yeah. You can't, you can't do that with class well, four. Class 4 means you don't maintain it at all. But can we choose not to plow all of a Class 3 road? I honestly don't know. No, I don't. I don't I, either. I well, so a, so we we could ba- barricade it like we do with with Crosstown for month season right. and say, you know, when whatever November first rolls around or whatever, then we just lock it off and it's just not not you, maintained anymore. Not or, well, you don't even have to, even have to block it off. You just say that we're just not taking responsibility for it anymore. If you don't plow it, eventually they'll stop using it. Right. But I mean, I'm sure people go down there and pack to hunt and whatnot. They can't hunt on it. <laughs> what are you going to hunt on? Morris's Lane's posted, posted and so is in the gives, and they don't let anybody. It's like it's sitting in a stump top, right? Yeah, they, they, they can get into there and that's it. But there's a gate there that goes, well, into, town goes into our land. Yep. Is Mr. Morris's Land in Berlin? Um, I, I don't think that he has any, I, I don't believe he has any, I think it's in Barry. Yeah, I think it's in Barry. I think it's Barry right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. You can I get into our land, land is the end of Berlin's land, and then Morse's is, borders us. So does Morse get to his land through Barry's town, or does he yeah, get through to Yeah, through Jensen Road. Road. Yeah, he goes right up to the Bond Warehouse. Yeah. What's that? The Bond Warehouse. Bond Warehouse, yeah. yeah. Straight across there. Straight out through there. That's where that old. That were, uh, Booth Brothers, uh, yeah, the old Booth, Booth Farm. The, the brick. old, the original, yeah. Yep. Well, Gordon's place. Yep. Mm-hmm. So if we were to do <coughs> public hearings on these, we could clearly support that conversation. I mean, that sounds like a dialogue. It sounds like Chip I wanted mean, to be involved. In we that. we could find out. Obviously, if you decide to do a public hearing they would get a letter from us as well as it would be published in the paper. Mm-hmm. Um, and they could come and, and talk with you in person. The other question I could find out is can we not maintain a class three road is really what we're saying. I'm not saying not maintain it, I'm just saying not plow in the winter. Okay, can we not winter maintain a class? Because yeah. nobody's, I mean, if, the, if there's no house down there to, for a residence. No. Oh, I, I I understand completely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the, when I when Chip talked to me the first time, they talked about gating it. But you can't do that. You can't yeah. do that. No, I don't. Yeah. Not, not a class three. three. Uh-huh. Class, three. Uh-huh. class four. Uh-huh. In class four, you can. You can downgrade it to a trail, and you certainly can. There are certain restrictions you can. I mean, it's like it's like the Gun Barry Gun Club Road in Rowell Hill. We close them at everyone those are class four from November 1st yeah. to May 15th but 
the only thing with, with those two is that we do take them on the grade over them once a year or so. Yeah. And, we've and, the only, and the only time that, we, that I've done it more than once is if we get washed out or something. But normally you grade it once a year and it's, it's not, Rowell Hill's worse than the gun club. Oh, yeah. Pretty bumpy. Yeah. So, well, you know, so if, if you had that information about whether we can maintain mm -hmm. yeah, or how we can choose to maintain class three roads, I mean, we brought that up in a public hearing. I could obviously inform the decision and then Chip and everybody else can come and weigh in. We can figure mm -hmm. it out then. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to move that we warn a public hearing to, um, to discuss uh, reclassifying most of uh, Coos Trail as a class four road. And I second the motion. Any further discussion? Now, if we if we're going to take and uh, do a reclassification, I'm just wondering if we shouldn't take and go through all the town roads and look at them. Mm -hmm. So we press the snooze button on this one until we have a better sense of. Not necessarily that, but I mean, I'm just wondering if sometime along we should take and go and look through. We all do of have it. some other roads that, through whatever reason, by prescription or just tradition or however that we've inherited, that I have wondered why the town maintains. Yeah. Um, I can think of maybe two or three. But the roads, the roads uh, over on Northfield Road, the short roads. Uh, do you plow those with the ten wheelers, or do you plow them with the uh, ten wheelers? Taking the entire I, I, highways. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. I don't do any plowing over there unless unless somebody's been broke down or got. Oh, we have here so highways. I help out. Believe it or not, <laughs> the ones in Riverton, the alleyway, which is Davis Lane and Elm Street. We plow all of them on the big truck. Where's Elm Street? It's in right. Riverton, right as you are at the bottom they of the hill. start on the last down road. Yeah. So before you, before you go off the black yeah. mountain. Okay. As you head up across the road. We also do Wheeler Road, which goes up a hill to one house. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. yeah. That's and that's we got three Wheeler Road there. You know, at that's the bottom of the hill. And three of them on the straight up road. Yeah. Lord yeah, Hill, Murray that's Road, one. that other road that goes up over, over the steady pressure no, on the well, gas. No, the one across <laughs> from Browns Mill, it goes up to the we we house. Yeah, we only plow up to the railroad tracks, but we never plowed that when I was here before. Is that class three? I don't know what it is. Uh, Brown Road? No, no, no. One no, across, one the across street. from Browns Mill. Um, goes up to that one house over the railroad. Is it Murray Road? No. It's a fairly new road. It's a fairly new house. Yeah. Uh, the other one burnt. Gl Gladden? No, that's uh, there's there's Lord Road and Murray Road. Murray Road. And there's oh, another one. Lord, right like, so off. yeah, Lord Road and Murray Road. Uh, well, yeah, Murray Road is George Gross's place. Lord right. Road is Matt Levin. Now, another one right there. which direction is it, Tim? Going toward no, Montfield just, or Montfield? Just across the road from just before you get to Browns Mill. Yeah. It's got a yellow house that sits on there. I have to look. I can't picture. All we do is pull I guess off I was, the route I my eyes and closed then. just before the railroad <laughs> tracks and those the snow off and back out. Um, so they're plowing their own driveway with whatever. And they plow up over the railroad It's tracks. not the little road that there's a cemetery up there. No, not not the one underneath the no. railroad bridge. No, it's yeah. before that. I have to it's go before it, It's before I it see road road what looks like yeah. a driveway, but it's not labeled. Across the railroad tracks right there. Yep. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. That's one. Yeah. And that's a named road? I think so. There's no road sign on it. There isn't. It's the so one that's all, uh, this one, right? Yep, right there. Oh, that's a yellow. Yeah, we that's plow that's right up to about road. here, do, well, just before the railroad that's tracks, you know it's the snow off. Is this, um, mm -hmm. yep. is this Brown's road, Mill Road? Right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, so, hmm. so, so we have an unnamed town highway, probably unnumbered then, too, and we're plowing it? I don't know. Possibly. The house that was there burnt. I don't recall that one. I think we. I'll investigate. I'll get an investigative reporter on it. Yeah. That would be wise. Yeah. Like I said, when I was here before, we never plowed that. 
Yeah. And when I came back, they were following it. Well, you so would I have time um, if you choose to have the public hearing on September 4th, your meeting on August 1st, um, to consider any further roads that would give us to the next meeting to give you a list of other roads that may be good to talk about. North Wall just went through this exercise a couple months ago. Yeah. I mean, turn out. We don't have to include it in that public hearing. We can always. Get rid of a whole bunch. Well, one that we really need to talk about is, is I call it the alleyway in Riverton, where John Truman and Mercier's lived. Mm -hmm. um, the guy that owns the two apartment buildings, the water's running in their doors. And now, where's, where's this one? Right. Right, right, right as you start up cross down road and you go down where you know, Mercy down Truman. Road. Isn't it Mark Mercier Road? Mm -hmm. No. no it's the just no, it's Davis. Just Davis, Davis Kenzie yeah. Hall. This, yeah, yes. right yeah. beside. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you got the lower he, side there where the apartment building said that the water apartment side. Yeah. is running in their doors of their houses and they can't open their doors because it hits the door hits the road when they try to open their doors. Now, I haven't put anything in that alleyway. I Scraped it last year with the lower because you can't go in there with the grader. Yeah. And it's just smoothing it out. And they just called and complained again because it needs to be, it's rough and it needs to be fixed. Um, I don't know what we're going to do about the water problem and the, and the doors hitting the road when they open their doors. And he, he's he's thinking about, he says, I guess I'm going to have to raise my doors up. The only other choice is lower the road. Yeah, well, I sit or throw it up. I think maybe on second thought that it might be wise to deal with these two roads on September 4th and mm -hmm. then go forward with other roads. Yeah. But then we'll have the, we'll have the uh, procedure down. Yeah. We're getting good at it. Perfect. Yeah. Good point, Brad. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of Jeremy's motion? Aye. 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 So, I'd also like to make a motion that to include Walker Road in the motion for a public hearing. Black Road. Black Road. Black yeah, Black Road. Road. Walker Road. Josh Walker. Doubt Road, whatever. The um, motion was just Cool's Trail. Right. right. So, I'd like to make a motion to have a public hearing on September 4th. For the upgrade of Black Road from Class Four to Class Three, I second that motion. Any further discussion? Um, have we heard from the other landowners affected by this? Um, that's the reason for the public hearing, so that they have um, okay. an opportunity. But no, I have not heard any further. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I know. Just re re reluctant to get back into this neighbor neighbor dispute thing again. It's not not our job. And I'm just Jeremy. Let me make sure Josh, it clear. That Josh, it's not a neighbor dispute. He's talking. Oh, Josh. I'm sorry. I, excuse me. I'm, excuse me. But you you're taking this all wrong. Josh. No. I understand. No. So and <laughs> I, I I don't even know what to say because I'm just going to get interrupted anyways. So no, I mean. This is a neighbor discussion. This is a dispute that has been brought to us sometimes with lawyers and that we're expected to resolve this. You know, upgrading Black Road from a class four to a class three is not going to solve this. It's probably just going to exacerbate it. Um, it's just, yeah. I, and especially since the doubts aren't here tonight to essentially weigh in on, what, on the wisdom of this, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not going to support this. Can I say something? Um, I was advised to call that lawyer because I talked with uh, Paul Gillies, the guy who wrote the laws about class four roads, and he is a moderator for the town of Berlin and a neighbor of ours, and he didn't want to get involved in a dispute. But he said that, that he directed me, he even told me who to call for a lawyer. I didn't want to bring a lawyer into it. And after talking with him, he advised me to get counsel on that because I wasn't being treated the right way for that road, that you didn't have a right to put flags down that road. He, he, that's why the lawyer got involved. You know, I apologize. I was totally embarrassed about that lawyer that came here. And, and this is not a neighbor dispute. This is something that I believe that I have the right to. I was awarded the right when I got my building permit from the town. And I was even told, you know, I wasn't told I had to go to the select board 
to get permission to use a class four road as an entrance to my driveway. And I had the meeting, it went through the board, through the zoning board, they gave permission and, and that's where I've been going from. And then a few years ago, my neighbors have started this dispute. I have just wanted my access to my house. I have no dispute. I have done nothing to my neighbors. It's there. It's the other way around. If I could just say, I think this is the reason for the public hearing, so that everyone has a chance mm -hmm. to voice their opinion. Um, also, I just throw a thought out to you. I know we talked about winter plowing, but again, are we doing maintenance as well? So that's another question. Can we have a class three road that we only plow? Kind of opposite the other question that I'm going to be asking. Two scenarios yeah. that are going to apply to yeah. several roads in this town. So I will. As we go through our inventory. Versus grip grading and whatnot is what you're saying? Yes. I just throw that out. I don't know. I mean, I think it's good to know. I think it's good to warn a public hearing and have the opportunity to everyone to weigh mm -hmm. in. And we may be pleasantly surprised at the outcome, but we won't know until we actually go that route. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth worth the attempt. I agree. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Motion carries. So I'll get answers to those questions, and I will schedule a public hearing for September 4th. Thank you, Dean. Okay. Uh, updated bridge and road standards, new terms? Yeah, this is uh, as a result of the um, municipal road permit project that VTrans is working on um, statewide. Uh, we do have town road and bridge standards that were adopted by the town in 2013. And there are some changes because of the hydrologically connected road segments. Um, so um, the municipal road standard, uh, we have to maintain the hydrologically connected road standards required by Act 64. and. We are doing this presently. This is nothing that is being added. Class four standards, we're, we're maintaining um, non-hydrologically connected road segments to municipal road standards, yes. Class four standards, no. Um, so, and again, I won't go through the whole thing, but it's not an awful lot of difference. The intermittent stream crossings, are our culverts big enough to handle the water? Um, the roadway construction standards, the guardrail standards, we've done a lot of uh, work on those and have put a lot, in fact, we have another big project coming up in Crosstown. And the driveway access standard, Tim monitors new driveways. Um, so it is paperwork, basically, for lack of a better way to put it. And I would encourage the board to approve it and sign it. There's no surprises in the guardrail standard that they've gotten here, Tim. What's that? They, with the, the guardrail standard that they're having us adopt here? No, and the guardrail company we use has to go by them, and they were, okay. yeah. you know. That, that's why we need to do some work on the guardrails on the cross. You, you travel that's, enough to know. That's, <laughs> that's why I was asking. I mean, it, it's. That's the project. It's yeah. bad me. Uh, I've met with Lafayette. Mm -hmm. and went over there. It's not so much the post, mm -hmm. it is the panels, that they call the rail park panels. Right. And he said that he can reuse a lot of the posts. And so the, and those are eight foot posts? Mm -hmm. Most of them are. Okay, well it says, that, so that's why I ask here, is it said this, if it's less than three feet from the rails of the hazard, then you have to use steel beams that are eight foot. I'm sorry, steel beam guardrail with eight foot posts. Yeah. Because and as you know, the guardrail company cannot, it has to go by the standard. Yeah, perfect. And there's, there's some of them there that you can't put an eight footer in there because there's legs there. We ran into that problem last year on the lower end of it down there. 
just before you get up to the top where the sharp corner is. So we, what do you do with that then? They just kept driving them until they got them down enough, but what they do is they just go down and they bend. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're rugged, they're solid, but, sure. but you just... So are, are we ever going to have to like reclaim part of that road just to get it low enough so we can actually have guardrails? No, he, they'll be able to fix what's there. Okay. That, that's what he's telling me. Okay. And now I've called another guardrail company, and they're out of New Hampshire, and they haven't returned my phone call, so I don't know what's going on there. Okay. I move that we adopt the town road and bridge standards for the town of Berlin as presented. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. So Motion on that, please. Discussion regarding the floor in the town clerk's office? Yeah, we had a, um, in the town clerk's office there are tiles that are broken. Uh, I did contact the uh, Vermont Department of Health, the asbestos and lead program. I talked to Mr. Kinnick and um, I had given you a copy of his memo um, and his opinion was, well, first of all, we don't know if these are asbestos tiles. We suspect they are. Um, we haven't had them tested. He says asbestos floor tiles generally do not pose a significant health risk since the asbestos fibers are locked into the vinyl matrix. So forth. Um, he recommended that we have an expert come in and determine whether they are asbestos and we can um, cover them if we have concerns with uh, a resin or and he even mentioned you could put a rug over it, which we have a rug over it. Um, it would be nice to have the tiles fixed, um, depending on what that cost is. Um, you know, that might be a future project. But I think it's not, according to the health department, it is not an imminent, you know, um, thing that needs to be. Are those tiles the same? They're all the same except for the ones in the vault over in that section. The ones in the vault are different. Yeah. That, that whole section. Though, yes. So it's good construction and added this on. There's no information about whether or not those were asbestos. And of course, that's the old section. Right. And I've they never seen I've never seen anything about the old section construction. Um, well, I didn't know if when you right. I, I know. Yeah. Wasn't tied in if there right. was any. Right. Right. Any idea when he's going to, when you're going to be able to get an inspector here to look at these? I think he's planning to be here sometime next week. Okay. And is he going to sample not only the town clerk, but the rest of the building too? I can ask him. I hadn't. Well, that makes sense. If you want to know, for example, if this floor is asbestos. Yeah, well, um, when was this built? 2006, this was. Well, no, no. The oh, building no, was, re the, was redone. To the, the, okay. The inside was changed in 2006, but the the building was built back in the 90s. Yeah, it was post. They wouldn't have. I mean, like these tiles are. But the, but, but these tiles are 2006. No, these are no. Not. These these yeah. tiles I think were. Uh, what they did is they put that wall in there, and they changed some of the walls. They didn't necessarily change the floor. Because it was in the, it was back in the late seventies that they put the original town, the yeah. oh. smaller part up. Well, then we can. I mean, we can have these looked at as well, have just the, so you have a, so we know. Also the police I suspect these are not assessed, but we can have them. Uh, EPA uh, partial ban in nineteen eighty nine. Right. Yeah, no, I was thinking it was in the eighties. If it was after that or before that, yeah. I would just, I would, I would ask him. He's already well, he's here. here. Yeah, what he thinks. Sure. Probably no lead paint over there, but maybe there is. You know, like I think the late '70s when that was. I think that yeah. was built in the late '70s. I think that was back when. Uh, I grew up in an old house. How did it? It was here when I came here. Yeah, I said I worked here in '80. Well, but that I think was very hungry. I think that was. Uh, that's either going to be oil or latex in there because lead paint was already starting to fall out of favor. Yeah. Right. It just might not hurt to ask him while he's here. He'll just be able to visualize. Well, the thing is, I mean, all he's going to do is take samples and 
test them. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And so hopefully I'll have that soon so that I can come back to you and tell you what his results are and what he plan what he suggests we do in the town clerk's office, if anything. Okay, and winter sand purchase. Um, last year we changed the way we we're going to purchase sand from bidding to quotes because we can't get only have one pe one person bidding on it. I've got two quotes, one from LePage's and Barry, and one from Barron's and Bolton. And the sand out of Bolton is seven dollars and seventy-five cents a yard. And delivered? No. <laughs> and the sand out of oh. the sand out of the pages is nine fifty a yard. And what's gonna be the difference in trucking? Three dollars a yard. It's gonna cost three dollars a yard to get it trucked here from Barry and it's going to cost six dollars a yard from Bolton but the quality of the sand is going to be a big issue here because we've gone through this for three years in a row now with <coughs> garbage for sand and I've gone around and talked with a bunch of towns that are using the sand out of Bolton they don't get slime, they don't get the mud, and they don't get as much dust. I've gone through a ton of chloride already this spring, way more than I have since I've been here. And that's with the, with the, with the LePage stuff? No, that's from the sand that we got over the last three years. Last year, um, Pete, you went over to our supplier and <coughs> checked the sand mm -hmm. after we had discussed it. Mm -hmm. And you're saying I complained that, about it. Yeah, and, and then we didn't get we, we didn't get the sand that that you showed you. That you showed me. Yeah. So, but we're not using LePage. LePage. No, 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 well, no, no. There wasn't We've LePage. Never used it was Larry LePage. Hebert yeah. in Williamstown. Um, I went to LePage's last year to, to to get a bid, and he won't bid because he bid it one year, and and his equipment burned up on him, and he couldn't couldn't come up with the sand to the town and they they gonna take him to court and all this stuff so he won't bid anymore because it's a contract and he has to fill the contract and he couldn't do it. By quoting it's not it's not a contract. Can you is he I'm not gonna ask this very well, I don't know how to say it, but do you have confidence that he could supply you with the sand you need? Um I don't know. Um East Montpelier is the only town that I've found that's getting sand from them. But they don't buy a whole lot. They only get like 3,000 yards, so. And you're talking about a $6,000 difference between vendors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean. 5,000 yards. What's the, how much do you so usually go through yeah. in the winter? It's hard to tell because the last, the last three years we've had this garbage for sand and we've had so much so many chunks that so big we couldn't move them with a loader. We had to hook onto them with a chain and drag them with two pieces of equipment to get them out of our way because it's it's not sand, it's dirt. When you can take sand and put it in your hand, go like this and make a ball and it stays there, you could throw it like a snowball. Sand, you go like this, it's just gonna fall out of your hand. I've gone and looked at La Pages. I went to East Montpelier and looked at it there, and I talked with the road foreman over there. Um, he he's kind of getting into it, so it's all La Pages. So it's really because he had sand there when he first started buying it from him, so it's got mixed in and everything. But I've talked with Moortown, Warren, and Duxbury. There's nine towns in the valley that use it. And they all love it. They don't get the chunks. They this don't is get out of Bolton. Yeah. They don't get the chunks. Well the city of Montpelier uses it too. They haul it in there. Well, they don't use a whole lot because they don't have a whole lot of dirt road, but um, 
use most of their sidewalks, don't they? Yeah. And everybody likes it. So. And have you seen the pages stuff? Yeah, I've gone down and looked at it. It's it's not as good as the stuff coming out of Bolton. I'll, I'll it, say that much. So, given you you said the six thousand dollar difference, is the six thousand dollar different worth it? Yes, I think it is. I really do, because you just can't imagine the last two years what we've gone through over there. That's why we had to buy sand this spring. Mm. It wasn't that we really ran out because I got sand left. It was just we had to push so much up off to the side because we screen everything right and then uh, then all the chunks are behind the screen when you got to get rid you got to move them out of the way yeah and we were wasting more than we were putting on the roads and the time that those guys spent because i don't do much sanding with what i do because i do all the blacktop mm -hmm. but what little bit i did do and I, I saw what they were complaining about they had to get out eight ten twelve times on a load of sand to keep cleaning their chutes oh, out it unplug it because the sand wouldn't come out of their, their trucks. It was it was hanging up in their bodies because their bodies have a side belt so they tilt onto the chain. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't go down onto the chain. They had to get out and shovel. And you know, it's 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 money that we're it's costing us because it's taking us longer. Will will Bolton sign a contract for a guaranteed amount? Um, I mean, sounds like sounds like LePage won't but will will they? I don't know. I've never, this is a woman that runs the pit up there. So I don't know, I've never dealt with her before. Um, Jeff Newton went up and got a load of sand and brought it over here and dumped it in our yard mm -hmm. for free so that I could see what it is. And I'll tell you, it's nice sand. It's sand and it's got plenty of stone in it. Mm -hmm. So, and I know the town of Marshfield uses because I live in Marshfield, mm -hmm. they use it out of Gravel's Pit and Wolcott. And it's just, it's basically, it looks like the same sand. And I'll tell you, you, you can't believe the, the less that they're going to use on their roads over there because it's it stays there and it doesn't get all swined up and muddy. Is the rate they quoted you based on a flat rate or did they ask you quantity and base nope. their price no, on No, it's a quantity. flat rate. Flat rate. I'm just wondering if they might get the price down. No. Based, no. No. So Either one of them. It's the flat rate. It's, it's not by 5,000 yards that we buy, it's per yard. And so those two in Hebert, are they basically uh, the options in the area? Wait, well, the I don't even know if Larry's doing sand. Well, not that yeah. he's an option based on yeah. the quality you're yeah. saying, but. Yeah, they're the only ones. There's one other saying, but. Yeah. Because that's why we ended up yeah. buying from Larry the for two years. The last few times that we did the bid to sand, we just had no interest. One, yeah. one bid, Larry was the only one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sold bidder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I guess I would like to see a contract with Bolton so that we have. Well, a, I can we, find out. So we have a guarantee that we're actually going to get going to get the amount that we need, so yeah. we're not left high and dry. Well, I mean, and is there a way to as far as that goes, we're buying it now, so. If you buy, if you budget for five thousand yards, you're going to get your five thousand yards. Let's we'll make yeah. sure that they, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, they, but, the, the pit's huge. I'm not, I'm not worrying about but, running but, over. But we're, we're, so we're not buying it over time. We're going to buy it once. They're going to drop it, and we're good to go. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I thought this was like an ongoing. I no, think no. I was thinking of the no, other, no, the other uh, pit. I didn't want to be in the middle of the winter and have them say, oh, my tractor broke down mm -hmm. or, or whatever it is, yeah. scoop it out. But you have it all delivered at the same time, and I didn't mm -hmm. realize that. Yeah, okay. once they start, they use it, you have it until we have it here. Then you can monitor the quality as it's mm -hmm. coming in, obviously. Yeah. I mean, and you think like I said, I talked with, I talked with more? Moortown. Warren's bought it for 16 years from them. Now everybody over in the valley is using it because they saw how good it is. Word of mouth gets around yeah. when it's good. Mm -hmm. So uh, seven seventy five a yard, six per Dollar. yard, six per yeah. yard for trucking, and how many yards? Five, Five thousand. thousand. Okay. Sixty eight seven fifty. Who does the trucking? They do. Newton. Newton does it. Um, yeah, she has no trucks. It's a, it's a gravel and sand pit. And that's it. Um, I move that we buy five thousand yards of sand from. Bolton pit at seven dollars and seventy-five cents per yard, and six dollars per yard for trucking. Uh, it's a total of thirteen seventy-five per yard. I second that motion. 
Any further discussion? I just have a question about the trucking. That's, I mean, that's the biggest difference right there. Even though we can't put sand out to bed, have you? I mean, we have had trucking bids bed before. Or, no, we've done that. Yeah. So what, he he ago? keeps yeah. his price the same every year. Yeah, we've had Newton trucking. We did put it out for bid. We Four had, years now um, he's done it. Yeah. And he was the Way. the winner. Way. Um, and he's always he's always taking care of us. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think it's probably wise though, maybe to just take another crack at it next year to see if, if he still comes out as the as the lowest. But yeah, he's been he's been solid in terms of yeah. showing up and mm -hmm. actually delivering. Well they came they came his drivers came to me last last year when we were putting up sand. And they said to me, you're not getting 21 yards on these loads. They all said, we've driven truck long enough that we know we've come up out of Barry. And when we can come up out of Barry in three gears higher than what we normally do, you're not getting 21 yards on here. So they said something to the, to them over there. They ended up bringing us more sand. So, so they, they had our backs on that? Yep. Yes, they did. Well, we want to make sure we get 5,000 yards if we pay for it. It's, yes. Yeah. And, and when they, when they, Newton hauls all of our gravel in here, but that's weighed, that's by the ton, so you, you can't get cheated there. You get what you're getting weighed for, so. Mm -hmm. But when it's by the yard, that's where they can make some money off you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And national flood insurance? Yes. Um, that was a request from uh, Paul Luciano, who is doing our um, the update for the hazard mitigation work, which I've just put someplace and now lost it. Okay. Um, and so he sent an email to Rosemary and myself asking you to note this and so it can be noted in the minutes and he's talking about this is people that live in Berlin that have flood insurance for the FEMA program, the total amount they paid in premiums um, and the different zones, the total policies, the total coverage, the claims since 1978 and the amount paid. And so basically he's just asking it to be in the minutes and have you aware of it, there's no motion needed. For that, so it's awareness only. I, I, I you, want to, you want to read it in, or you just want to send an email? I will it? include it with the minutes, and I will, you know, have it worded, and I'll help Bethany word it in. So it's in the minutes. Yeah. Can, uh, can I ask one more question sure. before I leave? Um, has anybody thought about a decision on that bridge on Lovers Lane, or how we handle it? Because I've had quite a few people asking, and I don't have an answer, so I just... I am putting out RFQs, requests for proposals to um, engineers, okay. um, which is the first step that I'll mm -hmm. need to have an engineer. Um, we'll need to pick an engineer. I suspect that will take a month or two before we have mm -hmm. a decision of who to get. And get them on the get them on the job. I will be applying to Shauna for the state assistance. Uh, that is no pen. No, I had something for you. Oh, uh, I, don't I don't know if I lost it or what. So I guess Tim, that's where I am with it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now you're taking you're taking the wind out of my town administrator's report. I will have to think of something else. Uh, <laughs> so if somebody asks him. Saying, well, we should have somebody. We should have. Well, I mean, obviously, the, the the bottom line is what I've told people is, unfortunately, it's not going to be a quick fix. Right. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a process that we have to go through, mm -hmm. and um, the key process is getting the engineering work done, and getting the state to go along with. The, I don't think there's going to be any question as far as the bridge support. Um, right. It's a process. It, so then the other the other thing was is the signage. They want me to spend money buying new signs. We got road closed, and the state says we should have bridge closed. Yeah, let's do what the state says. I would say. Because well, I'll get new signs. Yeah. Anyway. So they they, 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 they kind of really suggested that. Yep. Yeah. Seems like it'd be one and the same. Because well, the bridge is 
part of the road mm -hmm. in a certain right. way, right. and we have closed that part of the road in our ways. And it's blocked. I, I put cement blocks at both ends of the bridge so nobody can get on it. But I would like the money next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so well said. Do it. Send a picture to Dana. He'll forward it along. Okay. Bridge will go. Okay. Well, I just. You I know, I've seen a couple of. Spend all the money to have new signs. I've made. seen a couple bridge close signs on my travels. I can just get one and take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Does Montpelier have some extra things to borrow from? No, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know. It's, yeah. It's a small thing, but I think that I probably just, we should do it. You no, know, it's going to yeah. cost us a little to have signs made up. So I just thought I'd ask. Well, hopefully, we won't have to have to use it very much again in the future. Because right. I've looked, I've looked over there because that was closed before. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many years. Well, they, Bob Warnick told me that they redecked it in nineteen ninety four. I think he said. Yes. Yeah. And I looked all over there to see in the shed if we had any signs or anything that said bridge closed, but we don't. Don't worry, Tim, I'll get it out of the water money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Uh, yes, Thanks, Tim. Thank you. When was that redact? 1994. So it's what, 25 years? Yeah. Interesting in the plans, because we have the plans that were done in the engineering report for that, and it said, we, we believe this will last 25 years. <laughs> we were like, and and I years. have to say, we were surprised like. if that ever happens like that again. It, right. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, for you, I, got, <laughs> um, I didn't realize they made them this small. They go down to 18 or 2 foot squash culvert now yeah. for your yeah. driveway. Uh, I got a, I got a card and that you could call to find out. Well, I don't know. I mean, if that culvert's it's in there now, it's what two foot. Uh, I think it's eighteen. Eighteen? No, it's not enough. Well, if you go, if you go to an eighteen squashed, you got twenty two inches wide by sixteen inches high. Yeah. But if you go to a two foot, it's it's twenty something wide and almost twenty inches high. But I didn't realize they made them down that small. You asked well, me the question yeah, last time I was here. I was going to so. take in. I was going to take and build the driveway up anyway, so I could probably get away a little bit. Because the squash culvert, culvert will handle water, a bigger volume of water than a round culvert will. Yeah. I was going to see some about the feasibility of moving that back away from the road just a little bit. That's up to you. I got his, I got a card yeah. and the dimensions of it. I was okay. going to give it to you tonight. I don't know where. That's I, right. I thought I had it in my shirt pocket. So. I didn't have it. All right. Well, thank you for having a good evening. Enjoy uh, your night. Yeah, thanks. Um, thank you guys for all you do for us. Aw, yeah. thank you. Okay, signature on resolution for grant of Vermont Housing Community Development. This is something you voted on at your last meeting, and Jeremy's name was spelled incorrectly. <laughs> oh, I'm so it has been adjusted, so he can be true to his origins. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't want to have the Swedish spelling. No, no. <coughs> okay. Um, approval of suck board minutes from 6 2019. Move to approve the select board minutes from June 20th, 2019, as presented. The second motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. All right. Let, motion carries. Town Administrator's report, Dana. Yes. Um, in addition to what I'm trying to do with the bridge at Lover's Lane, I've been speaking with the engineer regarding Richardson Road. Um, he has scheduled some more soil borings for next week. Uh, they have done preliminary borings. However, he needs more information. Um, this will be under the existing contract and will not cost us anymore, which is the really good news. And then once he has that information, he is going to do a design for us to have us consider. Um, and he will probably come mid-August to talk with you about this project. We, um, we have, if you're interested in buying a car, we have a police cruiser for sale. Um, 
It was only driven on Sundays um, to church, slowly. very slowly. Um, so this has gone in the newspaper. This will be, we'll consider bids August 1st. Um, I did, I do have a bid list which I sent out. You remember we sold the cruiser to someone from Indiana a few years ago and he is interested in it. I'm not sure what he does with them, but I don't, you know. But it worked really well. He paid us and then a transport truck came and really? off it went. Um, so that will be, we'll be opening that August 1st. Um, a few weeks ago, I wanted to ask the board, the Berlin Corner Cemetery Association came in and talked to you about their problem with um, maintaining mm -hmm. the cemetery. I've, I've given it some thought and quite frankly, I mean, other than sales, I think that at some point, the town would have to consider helping. Um, but I just wanted to kind of bring it up so that maybe we could write a letter to the Senate to let them know that it was on your mind. Ed, I hate to have it slip off the radar. I don't know. Famous for that. It was some time ago, it was brought up about putting in a, I don't know what they call it even. Basically, it's a stone wall with niches in it for urns. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if they looked into that at all, as far as trying to uh, to sell space in the cemetery. I have never heard of them mention that. Right. You know, there is a word for it that you know people in the cities have it. You know, it's like a, like a crypt or a. Uh, no, it's it's just a little square, cut out in a, in a granite that, wall, they, they and they put the urn in there, them. and then they seal it with a br brass plate or something. Yeah, well, but I think it's they like have some safe deposit box. Box. Could be. Uh, no. no. I think they did make a good point about, you know, they need a person to manage the secretary, I mean, the cemetery. Yeah. Um, I, was, well, I was just wondering if that would be a... a I have not. I maybe I can talk bring to up Jeff some sales about, about it. it. Yeah. I think that they were... I don't know if they were trying to get a gauge on what level of support they would get from us, but I didn't get very much clarity as to what direction they wanted to go. Or I, well, I didn't either, but I'm just... So I'm I don't just, know if we I'm should just, write them maybe a letter saying thank you for coming in and asking them if they've had... And just been asking if they've had any... I think I'm only mentioning it because it's, you know, it's something they come in. I, I like to do the circuit. Well, we'll follow up with a letter just know. thanking them for coming in and asking <laughs> if they've had... You know, I mean, I don't think you're in... Thought I don't it. think it's eminent. At least it's not like the water. It's not next week. But. Well, I took away from it was they were just worried that their endowments were starting to dwindle. Right, and they weren't going to be able yeah. to, in years down the road, in the future, they would not be able to what sustain. I, what I took out of it was a little bit uh, that they had the overhead of the, uh, the payroll, which was originally, they thought, a 1099 position, which then up the expense. Right. So they were hoping that maybe, I think they were possibly hoping that maybe we put it in the bid for the cemeteries, or the cemetery commission would put it in the bid for the mine and the there and that would eliminate some of that and then maybe they could get back to a 1099 position is what I think they ultimately would like. I don't I'm know not they sure if they can they go back to a 1099 the way some of these payroll laws are written now. Um, if they put it out to bid, I bet they get theirs. You know, um, you're saying if they put it out to bid, not the town. They put if it out to we bid. We put it out to bid, or they put it out to bid, or, yeah. or whatever. What you're talking about is the section they hired to uh, manage the cemetery. Right. Yeah. Right. They could put out the, the digging out to bed. They could put the mowing out to bed like the other cemeteries, or maybe they wanted us, you know. I don't know. So I'm just bringing it up to you. We don't need a decision. Um, I'm just trying to bring how it up do we? To you. How do we keep the dialogue going with them just so that it doesn't get out of control and we're forced into So what's, what's their annual deficit right now? Um, well, they gave us their balance sheet, and I guess last year they had um, a loss of about $30,000. That's, that's only going to get bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we took it over as a municipal cemetery. It's the 
probably be less than that just with the, you know, the I think what they were saying if they here. didn't have to pay the payroll taxes and what they have to do as their employee what was the, you know what was the line item for the employee it was a, um, should be in there right that's their profit I'm sure it is. is if you did that if you could hire somebody just full time and have it summer mowing and whatnot and then in the winter it helped around <laughs> the Garage the highway crew, yeah, help around the sheds and whatnot. I'm not saying it, Justin. Or, I mean, just have me a town highway employee and um, them do the mowing. Or, or if there's a, there's a neighboring town or city that has someone in a similar position that could also yeah. be draft, shared. drafted or shared, we could contract with the t with another city yeah. to go and do that work. I'm surprised that's not in there. It is, it is here. So I'm trying to figure out what, what the uh, here, let me, get, let me give it to you. Have the equipment this section maybe yeah so I, I think <clears throat> we send a letter to them and say that you know that we're interested in helping and making sure that that it, you know that that is maintained as a as a historical and community resource um, and then you know that we're interested in hearing any any suggestions that they might have and, and, I, and I think if, um, if you're willing and have the time, maybe you know, reaching out to Barry City, Barry Town, Montpelier, and finding out do they have full time staff that maintain their cemeteries? And if they do, if they'd be willing to contract for, essentially just contract for, for this over here. Right. I think Hope Cemetery has. I do know that Barry and Montpelier do have, have full time staff. staff. Yeah, well, I think Montpelier and, and Barry probably will, but East Montpelier. Right. They may not. They may have. Even uh, Williamstown. But I guess, I mean, it's really important that someone manage it. I of mean, course. it's. Um, mm. I have a terrible story about cemeteries. Um, we had someone managing one of the cemeteries in a town that I worked at, and my former boss was put in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and he is the one that designed it. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> Um, it's not very no, nice. this I had to flow. Thank you very much. Yeah. And they've got the I couldn't see it. Payroll liability. Yeah, that's I couldn't see the salary line. Other current liabilities are the perpetual mm -hmm. care liabilities, so I don't know if they're putting the payroll expense into the perpetual care liability. Maybe. So I might just write them a letter saying, let's stay pretty. in touch and, and yep. you know keep on top of it. That's really all I'm thinking. Thanks for bringing for that up. Yeah. Um, and that's all I have, right? Uh, round table, Justin? Nothing. Well? The only thing I was going to ask for is if there's reports from each of the different, like, commissions and, you know, other entities throughout the town so I can get more knowledgeable. Are you thinking but, minutes and things yes, like that? Yes, yes, like okay. minutes, quarterly reports, yes. anything like that. So Let me gather more. some things that for you. That would be wonderful. Sure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Are, there, are there minutes online? Um, That's I, a good question. I think so, but so before I answer, I'm going to check. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So either way. I mean, you know, the, the law states you have to have minutes within so much period, and these are volunteers we're talking Excellent. about. And sometimes, right. you know, we try very hard to but I think but but Diane and Corinne are pretty diligent about getting the minutes that they have. Actually it's just it's all Diane, isn't it? It uh, Diane oh, mostly yeah. on the website. It's mostly yeah. Diane. Excellent. But, but let me gather them for very you. Very much appreciated. Well, Thank yeah. you. That's all I have. Jeremy? I'm good. Okay. Uh, any executive session? Yes, please. It would be under personnel. I move to enter executive session to discuss a personnel matter pursuant to 1 BSA section 313 sub 2 Second motion. Any, uh, any um, uh, expected vote on the end of this? I don't expect an expected vote after this. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. You're now in the executive session.